Hey guys, welcome to Arcade Hacker. Uh, today we're going to be seeing the final video on Kabuki, this uh, very nice CPU that, if you recall correctly, it's, uh, it's a security crypto C80 or Z80 um, uh, CPU used in many games out there, ranging from Pang to Cadillacs and Dinosaurs and many other famous um, titles. So last week we um, we explored the uh, the CPU from the inside, if you remember, and if you've seen that video, um, we did a walkthrough through the whole um, surface um, area of the CPU. So I show you the different uh, um, areas and you know what every um, everything inside of the CPU meant. And um, I ended up the video by promising you that uh, in the next post, which is this one, we're going to be exploring in detail the uh, programmer of the CPU and basically. Uh, Finally, expose how to uh, desuicide and reprogram uh, Kabuki power games, so you can, or anybody uh, perhaps can, uh, can keep original uh, working copies of their favorite games. So, um, um, what we're going to be doing today, uh, it's rather than being most of the time in GIMP, this uh, this uh, graphic uh, program, we're going to be switching to a, a PDF presentation that I made up with the whole process, so you, so we can all. Uh, Better follow uh, what this is about, and basically uh, see the whole the whole flow and, and 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 all of the details about the reprogramming of the CPU. So, um, if you recall from that previous video, I uh, I basically share with you uh, the different areas that uh, are inside of the CPU. And just to recap uh, quickly on it, uh, we have a Z80 uh, a CMOS core inside of the CPU area. You can see it here in blue, and also we have all of these other areas in red, which basically are the CMOS components of the Kabuki uh, the decryption scheme um, itself. And um, today I made uh, several labels here so we can uh, all understand what this is about and quickly differentiate all of the uh, Kabuki blocks in the CPU. So we can start uh, perhaps here on the left uh, top part. Uh, we have the address boost and control lines interception and the data bus interception. Uh, down here. Um, I will not get uh, too much into it again, but I, in the previous video I explained that this is basically how Kabuki uh, gets control of everything that's happening through the CPU and decides what to do. For example, decrypting the data before it's fed um, into the Z80 uh, CPU core. Next to it we have uh, several blocks to the right of the uh, screen and um, from top to, top, top to down uh, they are the programmer uh, and, and the security component of the program, this is, this is what's uh, important for us today because this is basically what allows us to reprogram and recover uh, working copies of our games. And next to it, below, we have the memory registers. And this is basically where all of the encryption keys and different configuration uh, assets of the uh, Kabuki CPU are stored. Next to it and below, we have the decryption um, area which is quite extensive uh, and features many uh, many different uh, CMOS components and transistors that are dedicated to uh, uh, to the decryption scheme of the Kabuki. And then finally we have also uh, some more um, uh, decryption um, areas of the uh, of the Kabuki as well as some routing uh, for the uh, data data pass. So um, the specifics about the uh, the programmer itself. So. We have the programmer and we have the 180. This is actually run, it's uh, 108 uh, bits, 108 bits of, uh, of um, storage. And um, what's in the programmer? The programmer is basically uh, composed of two very different or very distinct um, elements. And uh, I would say that the majority of it is the security elements of it. I was quite surprised in in finding actually what was uh, involved in being able to record data inside of this uh, of this CPU. Wow, I mean they they really went into the detail and and, and, and made it as difficult as they could, I guess. So we have we have a security um, element which is quite uh, quite prevalent. It's everywhere and it's most of these. Um, most of this area up here, and we have the gatekeeper itself, right? So uh, it's this fine line in the middle of the two that basically grants you access to the memory registers um, um, inside of the uh, CPU. And this um, this memory registers, um, as I said, is 108 of them, and they all are one-bit registers. We have 108 uh, registers, and um, we um, 
we basically have them laid out in, uh, in, in the following way. So they all lay out in serial, so you need to write in uh, sequentially, one after the other, but the, the, the outside or the, uh, the reading by the, uh, by the Kabuki uh, decryption components is in parallel. So every single area of the uh, CPU that needs to decrypt has direct access to specific bits to perform the operations. And, and perhaps I can, I can show you uh, this uh, graphically. I, one of the tasks, obviously, that was necessary to do uh, to effectively reverse engineer the CPU was uh, also understand you know what to write and where and you're looking here at something that took a while to compose but it's basically a map of the 108 memory bits of the um, Kabuki memory area all labeled correctly and then you'll see the the pack trace of all of the routing lines specifically landing in different components of the decryption areas. So we have the central area, we have the lower uh, bottom area, and you see where all of, all of the different bits are directly um, attached to. So as I said, it's serial in, meaning the way we uh, write into this memory is through a serial protocol. And uh, the way Kabuki itself, uh, just out of curiosity for you guys out there, it's a parallel out, meaning there is 108 dedicated lines, bit lines, to 108 different parts of the decryption scheme that have access to it. So inside of the 108 bits, we have uh, 72 bits uh, dedicated to the decryption keys, and we have 16 bits, sorry, dedicated to the memory decryption area definition. And what this means is uh, basically a mask. Uh, uh, configuration that tells Kabuki uh, where uh, to decrypt data and where not to decrypt data. If you remember from one of the previous uh, posts when we were doing the software attack, we hit a wall when we found out that yeah, that Kabuki's or Kabuki's that have lost uh, the memory contents are basically non-recoverable because of this. Uh, it's trying to decrypt a Kabuki when, when it's dead, when it loses the memory, the memory contents, it's trying to decrypt any memory access, including RAM, and effectively leaving you with uh, a non-usable um, CPU. Finally, we have 20 bits that are dedicated to working memory. So what this means is uh, they don't uh, perhaps uh, uh, affect the decryption, but they are used by the, uh, the decryption components to store uh, temporary data. Why, um, why are they um, up here inside of the dedicated Kabuki memory rather than being uh, next to the components? I really don't know. I guess it's design um, optimizations and probably makes more sense that all of the memory is all together rather than uh, in, in, in separate chunks, if you know what I mean. So <clears throat> the programmer itself, um, is not trivial and as i said before most of it um, it's dedicated to security and let me show you the specific area inside of the cpu it's if you remember it's all of this area up here these four rows uh, that we have on the top right part of the cpu and this is the the, 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 the gatekeeper so this is where basically where it connects to the different uh, uh, memory registers in a serial fashion and up here, um, as I'm saying, this is mostly dedicated to security and it's a multi-stage um, uh, process with significant obfuscation. And um, what's happening here is that uh, the obfuscation, obviously, when you're talking about hardware, you need to think that they, they hide and they do things, the designers, uh, they do things uh, to basically hide information from 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 the naked eye and this uh, basically uh, required that the CPU was the process in several layers because we need to we needed to see everything uh, inside of the CPU not only this top vision that we have with the full metal and you see the pink bits around the CPU this is the, the silicon uh, that somehow you can see when the metal is not um, on top of it so basically we have to to the process the whole thing right in order to to get to the secrets and the the, the different uh, security stages that uh, are involved in kabuki it's four of them that we can name um, 
and and they are as follows we have a setup process so we need to uh, to set up uh, several things in order to kabuki start listening to us and i'm talking about the the programming section okay and after that there is a, a there's a door knock the way i define it which is imagine someone knocking at a door pom 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 hey hello let me in so there's a process for that as well then there is a 20-bit secret key that is um, hardware obfuscated and this is probably the most trickiest uh, part of it and, and something we're going to be paying attention in a, in a, in a few minutes so you see the, the real deal and exactly how they did this which is you know something remarkable I, I would say I mean it surprised me I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert here this is this is something uh, almost new for me um, I come from the software world not the hardware world so getting into uh, the reverse engineer of the, of the CPU uh, was like opening many new doors and new windows for me and there's a lot of learning into the process and I really enjoyed this part especially and lastly we have um, the fourth um, stage into the process which is another uh, uh, door knock so there's another small secret that you need to action before you are led through uh, to the memory so let's look at one by one uh, basis. So the signal setup. Obviously the first thing we need to do to reprogram Kabuki is power it uh, correctly and uh, not only we need to uh, apply the correct voltage to the uh, CPU via pin number 11 and we're talking about the chip itself right so we need to apply five volts to it like you would do in any normal operation and with that we need to apply ground to it and that's some pin 29 on the kabuki like any other standard set 80 uh, cpu and lastly we also need to apply five balls to the uh, refresh um, line because if you remember um, uh, this is how um, kabuki is powering its uh, decryption memory contents up here remember we 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 look at the detail uh, in the previous video so this this is pin 28 and there is a dedicated power rail that connects all of the memory registers with, uh, <coughs> with this uh, pin and obviously the voltage that you are supplying you miss you lose the voltage on this pin you will lose your memory content so this is the basic uh, power requirements necessary in order to operate and reprogram kabuki okay so two five volts inputs as well as ground Next, we move into further signal setup, and there's four um, signals: M1 reset, wait, and, and, and um, uh, bus acknowledge that we need to s uh, set up in a specific way. I'll go one by one as they make sense. So, obviously, reset uh, needs to go low, and if you um, think of the set 80 if you know what the set 80 uh, operation the cpu i'm talking about obviously putting reset on low means the cpu the cpu is put to sleep right it's like completely ignoring whatever is happening on the board and it's reset so it's, it's basically dead and and obviously the designers of the kabuki i guess uh they face several decisions here in specifically on the setup of the reprogramming because they needed to uh, basically arrange a composition of different uh, inputs and outputs that would not be triggered during normal operation and basically be compatible with the standard set 80 operations that uh, you would normally carry so re reset it's it's one of the requirements this line needs to be low in order for the process to begin also weight weight it's also an input on the standard set 80, set 80 cpu and basically tells the cpu to stop processing until further notice right so hey wait i'm doing something else hold on and this is also a line that we need to put low so reset and low they need to go low sorry every set and weight they, they both need to be uh, low and m1 as well as pass acknowledge they need to go high right and we're gonna see in a moment uh, what we do with these signals but basically you are looking here at the signal setup this is a stage one this is everything the way it needs to happen in order for the process to begin next we have a stage number two is the door knock it's the first door, door knock remember there's two of them and basically after we've done our nice setup and we have our signals the way i'm displaying here we need to do several pulses clock pulses in one specific pin this is a bus request 
it's a pin that is also an input in a normal set 80 uh, mode and basically um, allows external devices or components to tell the CPU, hey, I need to use your address bus and data um, and data lines. Please release them to, to me. And basically, we need to do or use this pin uh, to input several uh, clock pulses. I've put 10 here you really don't need to put 10 and um, the reason why is that if you look at the internals uh, probably there's not more required than three pulses if i remember correctly but 10 should put you on the safe side uh, it's probably a good practice because uh, if you apply all of these uh, signals maybe there's some delays propagation delays and, and, and god knows right and 10 clocks uh, should be fine remember Pass request, 10 of them, low, high, low, high, low, high, and you should get um, this thing ready. After the door knock, we get into um, into stage three, which I'm gonna tell you in a second. I don't want to miss this. So this is actually what happens when you, when you apply those pulses. There's three memory registers, one bit each, that basically will listen to those door knocks and basically open up the next process and the next process is a stage three it's a 20-bit secret key secret key hardware obfuscated and this 20 um, memory registers again around the programmers um, area here you have 20 of them that are connected to um, a set a, 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 a 20 XNORs, and um, if you know what an, an XNOR is, let me show you, it's basically a Boolean um, operation, which is the negation of no, of short, which is another um, operation, right? And, and basically, this is the electrical uh, um, a characteristic of it, right? So if you have uh, both inputs as low, you will get a high. If any of the inputs are is high, you will get... Um, Hello, and if both inputs is um, is high or are high, you'll get a high. And this is this is basically uh, a Boolean um, operation, and is is the XNOR. And this is this is as I'm as I'm sharing with you here. This is something that is connected to these memory registers. And um, if we look at them, uh, the funny thing was that hey, most of it uh, or most of the uh, all of actually all of the XNORs were attached to the power rails of the uh, of the of the uh, of the cpu right so here you have a, a screen capture a section or a portion of the cpu and you can see a register on the left and an xnor on the right right i know it's probably difficult to see it to the untrained eye but you need to trust me this is this is what it is and this is the xnor and here i have the XNOR here again, and I have a simulation that I made up in in one of the uh, um, um, IC design programs of it, just to confirm that I was looking at the at the right thing, right? And obviously, the electrical simulation also tells us that this is a valid um, XNOR. So, and 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 you, you have two inputs, right? A and B here and here, and one output uh, mark as Q, which is this large path here in. What, what happened while looking at Kabuki is that um, all of the XNORs in this, uh, attached to these 20 memory uh, registers um, were basically um, one, of their, one of their inputs was directly attached to uh, the power rail. And, you know, it was like, what the hell is that about? And this is basically what led to the need to deprocess the, uh, the the CPU, or one of the main needs to deprocess the CPU. And obviously, after looking into it, and this is a deprocess uh, uh, Photoshop of it. So what's happened here is that we've moved, we have removed all of the metal uh, layers. So let's quickly compare it. See, full metal everywhere, and metal removed, exposing most of the silicon and the end if and sorry the P PDF and the end if uh, down here, and if you see exactly here underneath see the connector here it's standing on top of this support here the power rail that goes across here that's one of them this is the ground and there's another power rail up here this is 
BCC plus five balls. So what happened is that the designers obfuscated um, the connections. One of the connections of every every of one of them, uh, one of the XNORs uh, inputs to one of the power rails. This is connected to ground, and some others are connected to the plus five volts BCC uh, rail. And this basically led to uh, the following picture. So we have 20 different XNORs that have one of their legs um, inputs connected, secretly uh, connected to one of the power rails. So all of the one in black is the ones that are connected to ground and then you have the ones in red which are connected to the, to BCC to the plus five and this is how the designers of Kabuki obfuscated a 20 bit um, uh, secret key necessary uh, that you needed to match in order to be able to you know proceed with sta stage four and effectively being able to reprogram the CPU this is um, to me it feels quite um, amazing right I mean uh, they said this is the first time that I see something like this and you know it's, it's a fine game I mean going after these things making sense out of them and and discovering little secrets and implementations like this one so uh, you end up as I'm, as I'm saying with this secret key actually this is the key you need to input right so um, and the way the way you do this is you have the 20 bits is here's the 20 of them in, in groups of uh, four, five groups, right? 20. And you start with the first one on the left and you go all the way to the right. So it's the 20, 20 bit sequence. And with every bit that you input, and you do this through M1, right? You need to input a clock pulse in bus acknowledge. So you do a high. So you set M1 to high. And then you do a clock pulse, pun, high low. Then you do a low, zero, and you do another pulse. You do a high, another pulse. You do a high, another pulse. And so on, 20 of them. And this is something that when you have successfully inputted this key, you will basically, let me go back, align the memory registers in a way, because they are serially connected, that will match and through the interaction of other components that I'm not going to get into detail, you basically open up Kabuki to the fourth and final stage, right? Now, one thing that left me uh, wondering is, hey, what's this key? What's the significance of this key? Truth is, I've looked at it in many ways, and, you know, it doesn't tell me anything. I've Look at, looked at it in decimal, in hexadecimal, I reversed the key, looked at it again in different formats. I even tried to see if it was Morse code, ASCII, whatever. Doesn't make uh, sense to me. So guys out there, if you want a challenge, maybe this key doesn't mean anything, but I, I don't... I hardly, um, I don't want to believe that the key is basically random and it doesn't mean anything. And, and, and the reason why is because um, after looking and having reverse engineer uh, Kawuki, I know these people, um, these Japanese uh, designers, uh, were paying a lot of attention to detail and the whole security scheme in the programmer section of Kawuki, it's so detailed that I fail to understand how could possibly this key be uh, random and don't have any meaning. Maybe, maybe it doesn't mean anything, maybe we'll never discover, but hey, here's a challenge. If you want to take on it, please uh, be my guest, and please let me know if you discovered anything. Now, uh, stage four, uh, this is the final uh, door knock, and actually I've put here four, this is not do uh, door knock two, so sorry for this, it's door knock two. It's basically uh, uh, simpler, and but again, it's obfuscated, and you need to understand exactly what to do by decomposing the CPU and fully reverse engineering all of the different layers. And basically, it's as easy as inputting 10 clock pulse in M1. So you get to M1, you do high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, 10 times. That's it. Stage four uh, completed. And this is basically because there is more uh, registers here. Actually, it's five of them. And again, this XNORs attached to them and they take the input of your actions. In this case, it's several pulses. 
and they take uh, their second input from the power rail. This is a positive, this is ground, positive, ground. Yeah, this is also the plus five uh, uh, XNOR attached to the, sorry, the, the, the XNOR attached to the plus, plus five uh, uh, rail. And by inputting the sequence, 10 pulses, 10 clock pulses, you basically uh, finish with the stage four. And ta-da, this is now fully open and you are able to program it. And what do you do uh, here? It's another important thing. As I mentioned earlier, not only I needed to go through uh, to the reverse engineering or all of the different phases and everything that you've just seen, but also making sense and understanding exactly what to uh, uh, write and where. And this is what the map that I saw you before, right? So there's 180 bits and yes, they go here, they go here. Okay, but what are, what are all of these areas doing? So uh, basically, uh, this is answer here, and I've put um, uh, as example the game Block Block by Capcom, and again left to right. In this case, is top left to bottom right. This is how you need to write the different uh, bits into the uh, uh, CPU. And let me quickly uh, tell you what they mean. So the first twenty are basically to ignore zero. Remember, I told you work bits, working memory. So this is memory that's not used by the configuration, it's used by uh, the ongoing decryption uh, that happens internally. So by writing zeros, you are, or sorry, by writing or inputting lows, uh, you are on the safe side. So just do 20 of them, followed by the address key, followed by the swap key two, swap key one, short key, and the memory decryption area mask that I mentioned to you before. Um, this key is right here, the address key, the swap key, the swap key one, uh, the short key um, are available from MAME. So um, if you access this URL or if you search on Google kabuki.c driver MAME, you'll probably land on, 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 this, uh, on this piece of code. And in there you have, um, let me show you, you have all of the different decryption keys that uh, these guys nicely expose and serve with all of us. So this is actually um, a place here in hexadecimal format, and obviously that's not how the CPU works. So you need to translate these uh, these bytes into um, binary, right? In order to to do it. But again, the address key, the swap key two, swap, swap key one, and short keys are public and available, so thanks to the main team for for this this great job. Uh, otherwise, it could have been uh, not possible to, uh, to 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 know this. So uh, they they you know you guys know that they do a great archiving effort and also uh, they they sharing all of this information for free with with everybody and you know I, I guess that's quite uh, remarkable. So um, the keys are here and you can basically put any combination. So for any game, so if you wanted to do pang. Um, here, this is Pang. Uh, we basically need to put our keys in binary format, obviously, here, as you have them here layout, right? And remember, this goes, uh, the work bits, zero is fine. And then finally, the, the memory decryption area mask is something that uh, obviously the main team doesn't know anything about, but this is, if, I, if you remember, this is how the CPU uh, uh, knows what areas of the memory to decrypt or not. And if you notice the 16 bits, and 16 bits it is what the CD80 CPU is able to address. So that's 65 kilo uh, kilobytes. And um, we have three ones uh, here at the beginning. And just to put it uh, uh, on easy terms, what this means, if we look, for example, at the main driver of, uh, of any Mitchell game, we can see here that RAM starts at, at the address in hexadecimal format E000, right? So this, one, 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 zero, 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 16 bits, if we put this on the calculator uh, and we put these three bits here, we basically get E000. So basically it tells the CPU, hey, anything from E000 onwards do not decrypt. And that's basically the final bit of the configuration of uh, of um, of the decryption keys for uh, for Kabuki, right? So you don't need to do it in this format. And with every bit that you input, as we did before, you need to input um, or to do a clock pulse. So you put a bit, 
So we put a zero to begin with, and you you do a clock pulse on bus acknowledge, right? Then we know another another zero, meaning we input a low signal on, on M1, and we do we do another clock pulse here all the way. Like I'm showing you here, top left, bottom right, right? And you end up with zero again, meaning low signal and another clock pulse. Once you've done that, you have inputted in a serial way 108 bits into the uh, Kabuki uh, memory up here, right? And the configuration has been saved. When you when you finish with that, um, just remember that. And by the way, I didn't mention this, but all of this reprogramming uh, or programming needs to happen outside of the board, right? So the CPU needs to be disconnected. For example, in Pang, I haven't been able to reprogram the 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 Kabuki CPU while inside of the CPU with Block Block, another Capcom game. Sometimes I've been ha I've been able to, but you know, most of it is being failure. So always, always the CPU outside of uh, of its socket, outside of the motherboard. And when you finish, you need to plug it in. And this is what what I was going to mention. So if you remember uh, at the beginning of the uh, the video we did the signals and the voltages so remember that um, while you are transferring the CPU back to the motherboard which by the way needs to have a battery a fresh battery uh, put in you need to do this transferring making sure that this line here refresh and ground are powered otherwise and as you can imagine, you lose your battery, sorry, your uh, voltage here, and you'll lose your memory contents, meaning you need to reprogram it again. So guys, fresh battery in the motherboard, and you need to keep your voltages uh, alive while you do the transferring once you finish the programming of the CPU. What I recommend you is that um, uh, you do that with any programmer you come up with, and you also attach the ground line you make it common, right? So uh, uh, you attach your ground line uh, of the programmer together with the motherboards, right? So uh, doing this should be enough. So holding these two pins until you have transferred the CPU into the socket and you should be fine. And I guess that's it, guys. I could go into many uh, details as to the making of this reverse engineering and many other uh, uh, comments, but I, I guess this is the most important thing, right? We've gone through, we've gone through the different stages of uh, reprogramming uh, the CPU. Remember, there is a setup and there is a secret uh, door knock that we need to do, followed by the 20-bit secret key, and followed by the last door knock before we uh, for we, we continue with the uh, reprogramming. And with the reprogramming, I saw on you that you need to do it this way right top left bottom right and all of the keys for your different favorite games are shared by the main team on this driver here kabuki.c that's available on the internet and the mask um, it's uh, something you need to come up with yourself block block pang they all have the same uh, mask so it's three ones at the beginning the rest are zeros and by looking at the driver this is basically e000 to ffff so imagine that perhaps another game has this on 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 c rather than e so you need to remove uh, this bit and keep it to zero and you know, if it was the other way, the the, uh, the other way around, meaning this is not E but F, you needed to add another one here, and another one here, right? So uh, I guess you, you get it, and that way you'll make sure that Kawiki is effectively uh, decoding what needs to decode and not mess with your RAM contents. And guys, um, I guess that's uh, it. Um, I've, I've I have also uh, built uh, um, a plug and play. Uh, uh, Programmer, so um, I've built this device uh, based on Arduino hardware. That basically, uh, if you are interested, is uh, a fully made-up solution. And if you want to uh, decide and reprogram any of your favorite uh, Kabuki power games, and you don't want to mess with building your own hard 
your own hardware and going through the painful process of implementing everything that I just shared with you, just get in touch with me on, on, on this email uh, here and I'll tell you more uh, about it. It's very affordable and you know I'm not in here into the making of, of any money, but I'll definitely build uh, several units. And if you guys are interested, again, just email me and I'll uh, make sure that I get one unit for you. It has a very nice menu. You turn it on by powering it via USB power and you select um, um, any of the games. All of the uh, Capcom games that are used Kabuki are uh, listed and you plug the CPU uh, on this uh, socket and it does a preview programming and you, they can, you can then nicely plug it in into your board and detach everything and have your game working. So guys, thank you so much for uh, watching and reading all of my uh, uh, Kabuki series of articles. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, journey as much as I did and I guess uh, I'll come back at some point during 2015 with uh, new attacks on other Capcom CPUs that probably are not still understood and you know you know the CPU the CPS one and the CPS uh, CPS two systems that also uh, suffer the same issues and we have no clues and no ways of reprogramming and basically have our own uh, games as originals kept you know in a nice way so guys uh, again thank you so much Happy New Year to all of you and thank you so much uh, for watching and reading my blog.